Steam Deck has just got a massive update with a bunch of new features, one of which being that it warns you if it's too cold or too hot to play the Steam Deck. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Blaze2K. Okay? Thank you for stopping on this video. I really appreciate it. Please drop a like, hit the subscribe, and click the bell icon for more videos if you want in the future so anyways let's get into the article so the steam deck got a big update recently um and we're gonna go through the changes you know one by one if that's what you want um but let's talk about one of the notable features this article comes courtesy of pc gamer the steam deck will now warn you when it's too hot or too cold to play maybe don't take your steam deck into an industrial freezer now i'm not too worried about taking a taking my steam deck somewhere that's too cold especially here where i am it's too damn hot you know if if i can go somewhere cold i'm gonna go there if, I'll, if there's an industrial freezer i can go into it let me into it right now because it is like over 100 degrees here and it's it's insanely hot this summer but anyways yeah so the steam deck's going to warn you now if the area that you're playing it in is too hot and it exceeds you know the maximum temperatures basically that it without it shutting down you now so following warnings from valve regarding the maximum and minimum temperatures for your steam deck it's is is happy to operate at the little handheld gaming pc will now warn you when it's running outside its safe operating temperature range as part of a major update to steam decks os version 3.3 valve has added a warning to tell users when their device is at risk of running slowly or not running at all from an excessive heat or cold so that's so basically if you're playing your steam deck it can actually run slower and more it can chug along basically um if it's in an environment where it's getting too hot if that cpu is getting a little bit too toasty it can affect gaming performance now we already know that if you're if you're a gaming pc guy like i am we already know that but for those of you people that maybe don't know that <laughs> now you know okay so um so yeah it should give you a little bit of a warning now phones already do this i believe like iphones and my android samsung phone if if you take it out in the sunshine sunshine too long you don't know it's like it heats up like a damn molten molten iron phone right um and it gives you a little bit of a warning it tells you okay put the phone down cover it up let it cool down before you start using it again. So it looks like they're going to copy that sort of thing. For the record, Steam Deck's safe operating temperature is between 0 and 35 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Let's just convert that. Um, so 0 degrees is freezing point. 35 degrees is, 35 degrees is pretty hot. 0 to 35 C2F. Let's see. 0 degrees is 30. So... 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the minimum temperature, and I believe, what else would it say, 35 degrees C to Fahrenheit, that is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so between, basically between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, basically you can't take this out on a Texas summer day, essentially, that's what it's saying, um, and it may throttle your performance or even shut down, or just melt into a big glob of molten plastic, who knows. Um, at high temperatures, that's understandable, the CPU and GPU in this case is an all-in-one AMD APU chip, which will, wait, um, APU chip, will exceed temperatures that silicon is designed to run at. At 100 degrees Celsius, the Steam Deck chip will throttle, and at 105, it will switch off. The ambient Ambient temperature will play a big role in reaching those sorts of temps as the Steam Deck will run at 60 to 70 degrees Celsius while gaming in a room at around 20 degrees Celsius ambient temp. But if you thought you'd be fine gaming in the Arctic, when, then think again. Because when you get down to sub-zero temperatures, it's a different ball game entirely. We asked Steam Deck's designer, Lawrence Yang, about what, what's the risk of running the Steam Deck in these sorts of super chilled environments. And he told us, largely down to the battery. So basically, at very cold temperatures, the battery starts to have a hard time. Just like any battery power device the steam deck's battery can't sustain peak power draw at temperatures below zero degrees celsius similar to the way cars have a tougher time starting in freezer, uh, freezing weather if temperatures do get this low we'll start to throttle the system to maintain battery longevity so in theory you will see that the new warning that new warning from valve in any temperature exceeding 35 degrees celsius or below zero we don't dare to test we don't dare to test it with our only steam deck unit though um so that article is from Jacob Ridley of PC Gamer. Now, is anyone, if you're planning a trip to the Arctic in the near future with your Steam Deck, think again. Because obviously, the battery can't perform at peak, you know, peak operating range 
at cold temperatures, which is kind of weird because you think, you know, a device that generates power, you know, PC gamers are obsessed with trying to get the CPU as cold as it can get. Um, but when you have a, that's PC gaming, you know, PC ga PCs, desktop PCs that are plugged in though, um, with battery power devices, it's a little bit different because batteries have a hard time in the cold. We know that with electric cars, you get less range. And um, it seems like that's the case with the Steam Deck. You know, it's not gonna be able, it's not gonna be able to provide enough power to the CPU and the GPU to sustain games at the max performance with that cold weather so that's fine that's something we can understand and obviously when it gets too hot it's, it gets too hot it might melt you know um so anyways yeah and on to the updates shall we let's get on to the updates so let's go to the steam blog um Steam Deck client update and Steam OS 3.3. So the general, the general things that have been changed. They've added achievements. They've added an achievements page to the overlay. Well, um, well, in-game press Steam button. So when you press the Steam button, you'll have an option to go through the achievements. That's pretty damn cool. They've added guides. They've added a guides page to overlay. Well, in-game. Well, you press the in-game Steam button. Um, added notification when Steam Deck temperature temperature goes outside the safe operating range. Okay. Added the scheduled night mode feature, allowing players to choose if and when they like night mode to automatically turn on. That's good because you, that's kind of like. The feature you have in your iPhone, right? You turn night mode on and it tints everything a little bit yellow, so it doesn't hurt your eyes as bad um, as much. Added a button to clear enter text in the search bar. That is really handy. Um, there's been a few times where I've wanted to do, to do that, but couldn't. Um, adapt um, Adaptive brightness toggle is now active again, so they brought back adaptive brightness. A lot of the stuff is like commonplace on smartphones anyway, so it's nothing new. Crazy new, but... You know, they're bringing it and they're making things just more convenient. Fixed notification for claiming digital rewards, firing endlessly for some customers. Fixed an issue with medium length game names in the menu, main menu overlay, not properly scrolling. Fixed some issues with claiming Steam Deck digital rewards. Fixed sound playing for achievement progress notifications. Fixed washed out colors in the remote play client when playing with specific hosts. And fixed Xbox login window for Flight Simulator and Halo Infinite not rendering certain characters properly. Um, Okay, um, Steam Input added missing deck buttons for gyro enable and button cord options, added support for game bundled virtual menu icons in the in-game deck UI, cool, that's kind of cool, and miscellaneous performance improvements, that's always good. They've added more support for tradition, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Chinese, Japanese, Korean keyboard, etc. They're still refining them. Um, they want you to provide feedback in the forums. Um, fixed desktop mode, keyboard, sometimes failing to show or dismiss. Now, this is a big issue that's been plaguing me. Um, when I go into desktop mode to try and install emulators and stuff like that, there's often times where I have to search something in the, the, the address bar on the browser. And bringing up the digital keyboard is a pain in the butt. So I'm glad they're making that a little bit more easier. That is one of the biggest issues that I've had with the Steam Deck so far. Uh, fix an on-screen keyboard showing up under the, under Steam or on or the quick access menu. Okay. Update a keyboard behavior for improved fast typing on trackpad and touchpad and touch screen. Pressing a key while holding another key will now commit the held key instead of waiting for the first release. Cool. Fix some touch styling issues with the virtual keyboard. Not bad. System updates. Um, added a new Steam Deck software update channel selector. There are now three options. So you've got stable, beta, preview um cool they've made a bunch of different improvements with performance and stability here um fixed flat pack flat pack chrome closing improperly when quit through steam um cool desktop mode updated firefox to be installed as a flat pack rather than os repositories to ensure timely updates First time launches of Firefox on the desktop will now prompt for installation via the Discover Software Center, which will handle updates as they're published. Um, added the VGUI to Classic Plasma Desktop Theme. Cool. Um, I believe that makes it look like the old version of Steam, you know, that green sort of camel army color on the desktop. That's kind of cool. Resize virtual keyboard and desktop mode to the appropriate, appropriate dimensions and also added support for Quan Quanba Obsidian and Quanba Dragon Arcade 6 in desktop mode. Cool. Dock mode added an option to scale the Steam Deck user interface for external displays. This is a big deal because I know people who are plugging it into like certain differently sized monitors, ultra wides, whatnot, had issues with scaling people that were playing it on a 4K monitor, dock, docking it to their 4K monitor. It was basically scaled at 100% on 4K, which meant everything was absolutely tiny. They're, they've added scaling, that's a big change, big upgrade. Added a toggle for automatic scaling of the Steam Deck, user interface for external displays, not bad. Um, 
automatic scaling, added ability to adjust image displays for external displays that have overscan issues, that's always good, fixed the panel staying off from when disconnected from dock shortly after resuming from sleep, and fixed the panel backlight staying on while docked, um, they fixed a bunch of audio Bluetooth issues, fixed Bluetooth profile selection not being saved when switching away from desktop mode, Good, that's another good thing. Fixed echo cancellation, CPU overhead when the microphone isn't being used, improving power usage in idle or near idle scenarios. Fixed multi-channel audio and external displays, that's good, so we can switch audio sources, audio outputs. Fixed audio out on some capture cards. Fix some instances of corrupt audio after resuming from sleep. That's been an issue I've had on a Mac a few times, on my MacBook. Um, fixed audio update output with some 32-bit games that use ALSA. Um, and they've also updated, updated the graphics driver with compatibility and performance fix, so we might get improved game performance. That's a big deal. Updated wireless driver with fixes for Wi-Fi disconnection issues on 5 gigahertz. That's something I've seen people complain about quite a bit. There's been a lot of Wi-Fi disconnection issues. In fact, tell you what, mine's has been disconnecting from Wi-Fi quite a bit lately that I've noticed. Um, every time I turn it on, it's like no internet connection found, and which is weird because my Wi-Fi is always on. Um, and I've been getting that regularly, so that is good. And updated controller firmware up utilities to support future controller hardware revisions. Hmm. Future controller hardware revisions. Interesting. Does that mean they're they're creating a new Steam controller? Um weird. So yeah. Or are they hinting at a new Steam Deck with a new controller? New control inputs. Hmm. Anyways. There we go. Updates to the Steam Deck. Very interesting. Lots of good updates. We've still not got dual boot support baked in, which is something I want so bad. Um, so I could play Wars. I could switch to Steam. I could switch from Steam OS to Windows. Play Warzone. Play all the games I can't play on Steam OS, and then switch back to Steam OS when I want to play games on Steam OS. Because we all know Steam OS is the way to go. But there are some games that I can't play on Steam OS, and I'd like to play them. And being able to switch between Steam OS and Windows, it'd be back and forth, back and forth. It'd be kind of cool, and it would be, it'd be awesome. And if they could make that in and make it just super easy for people to do, that would be a bonus. They've not added that yet, but this is a hefty, hefty update hefty update so i'm looking forward to getting this installed looking forward to giving it a try and um let me know in the comments what you think about all the update changes um it a solid update a solid update um this is a lot of stuff that takes you know people like microsoft and apple years to to add <laughs> you know like software functions software features like this it takes them like a year or more to add stuff like this to their operating system so for steam for steam for valve to add stuff like this on the fly in a couple of months you know it's really impressive and it just shows how committed they are to the steam deck which is music to my ears Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Blaze2K, okay, as I said before. You know, if you want to see more Steam Deck content, stuff like that, please consider clicking the like, clicking the subscribe, and clicking that bell icon so you're notified. And please consider supporting me by clicking the join button down below and paying the price of a coffee, you know, um, just to support the channel and support everything I do on YouTube. Um, and the more support we get, the more in-depth I can make videos and just commit time to YouTube. So I really appreciate it. I love you. I'm Blaze2K okay, signing off. Have a great day and enjoy your Steam Deck. Let's go.